Hey everybody, it's Dana. Welcome back to my Valentine's Day card series, day three. If you missed any of the days, I'll have a link for you to watch them below. Okay, let's get started. I'm starting out with the gorgeous Lots of Hearts stencil from My Favorite Things. I absolutely love, love, love this stencil. I am also using some smooth white cardstock from My Favorite Things as well. And we're gonna go ahead and make a pretty background. Now I'm using some abandoned coral distress ink today to fill in this background. Now I have a card on my blog using this stencil and you don't want to miss that card. It's super, super cute. All right. Now, since I have my blending tool loaded up with that abandoned coral, I'm going directly to the center of the stencil. I do want to have a gradation of this color. So I'm going to start in the center really, really dark. And then I'm just going to use what is left on my blending tool to add the rest of the color. So it's going to be darker and deeper in the center and then it fades off. And this is a good way, in my opinion, like to clean off your stencils is just to make sure you like you rub all the color out of it or not your stencil, your blending tools, just rub all the color out of it. And you go from a very, very light color on the edges to a deeper color in the center. Now I do, I'm, I do know I'm going to be die cutting this out, but I just want to make sure that that center part is a little bit deeper in color. And what works so great about doing this kind of technique, you don't need multiple colors to achieve that look. Now this is my favorite, favorite part is pulling up the stencil and seeing what you have left behind. And look how gorgeous this is. I absolutely love this hearts background stencil from my favorite things. All right, now I want to turn this into a shaker card. So I'm using the Martini Shaker from My Favorite Things. I'm a huge martini girl, so this die and stamp set just totally spoke to me. I'm going to place that down onto that beautiful heart background, and I'm going to use some washi tape to hold it in place as I run this through my die cut machine. Now, once I run this through my die cut machine, this is going to give me the opening for once I run this through my die cut machine, I have this beautiful shape of this martini glass, and that's going to be our shaker. I've already cut down a piece of acetate, but you can use vellum if you want to, or twill if you want to. Either three of these would make beautiful shaker cards. Now I want to make sure I have some really strong adhesive on this. So I am using score tape. And I don't really didn't need the wider width of this, but this is all I had on hand. And I wanted to make sure that that acetate stayed in place. So that's why I'm using the um, double-sided tape. Now, if you want to, you could just use wet adhesive. I've just experienced sometimes, even with using the wet adhesive and it's sticking down, I have a tendency to get some of that glue on the acetate where I don't want it to show. So I'm preferring today to use the double-sided um, tape. So now I can just go ahead and lay that down and then I can go ahead and start peeling off the backing of this to go ahead and get the um, backing off and then I can place down that clear window. The clear window of course is going to keep my sequence from falling out of the card. All right, now since that's in place, I went ahead and I grabbed myself some tape and I doubled it up to give it a little bit more of a thickness to it. And I'm lining right around that martini glass. Now, the thicker you make this, the more depth you're going to have in your shaker card. So just remember that if you don't double up this tape, then your shaker card is going to be thinner and it's not going to give you the best uh, shaker part because there's not a lot of depth in that card. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. I'm going to go ahead and finish putting all the tape all the way around. And now since I have that encased, I don't see any glue or anything stuck to the window. And I like to just keep that area clean. Next, I'm going to come in with an anti-static tool. And this is just to take some of the stickiness off the inside curves of that double-sided tape or that double foam tape. 
And now we get to come in with the pretty, pretty sequence. I don't remember exactly where I got the sequence from. I think it was in a kit or it might have been like at Simon Says Stamp. I'm not sure. But it's a mix of hearts and clear crystals and regular sequence and red and white. And it's just so pretty. I really need to find out, remember where I got this from because I want to get more of it. Now, since I have all of the shaker beds and I'm only keeping it to the top of the glass because that's the only part you're going to see on this card, I'm going to bring in a piece that was cut out just so I could see where um, I need to cut off adding that sequence. And now all I have to do is add another piece of stacked up 3M foam and place that right in the center. So this way I'm not wasting any of that gorgeous sequence in areas that you're not going to see. Cause again, you're just gonna see the top of this glass. Now, once that is all done, I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a white piece of paper and I'm just going to back this. Now, remember I have a lot of sequence in there. So you're really not going to see this white piece of paper behind that. I'm gonna go ahead and press down firmly to make sure I have that in place and then look. Look how gorgeous that is. Now, the reason I didn't fill the bottom is because I'm going to inlay that piece back in. So I don't really need to fill up the area with any sequence because you're not going to see that. Now, you could fill it all the way and have your shaker martini glass be totally filled, but I really wanted to do an inlay of this martini glass. So kind of when you tilt your card, you're like, oh, okay, there's a cutout in there per se, and it's in the shape of a martini glass. Now, I did use some Connect glue on the back side of this glass because I do want to use wet adhesive on this just so I know I can slide it into place exactly where it needs to be. And I'll just push that down very gently because I don't want that glue to be squirting all out all over that acetate. I want it to stay very nice and clean. And now since I have that put in there, look how gorgeous, look how beautiful that looks. And I think anybody who loves martinis is going to appreciate this card. <laughs> all right, so now I have a lot of that excess white cardstock that I do not need. So I'm just going to grab my scissors and just trim around that. Because remember, that was just my backer to make sure that the um, sequence didn't fall out of my card. So I could have left this on here because it is the same width and height of an A2 card, but I just choose to take it off because it's really not necessary to hold on to. All right, once I have everything cut and trimmed around, I do wanna see those pieces that are sticking up. I do wanna glue those down. I don't want this to get like caught in the mail through, through an envelope or something. So I'm going to just use some wet adhesive to put that back down in place. This way I don't have to worry about it getting caught or it ruining my card by not having that glue down. So you just need a little bit of glue and that will seal that up nicely. All right, now we're ready to add a sentiment. So I want the sentiment to go along the front of this card, but I really want it to be nice and bold because look how gorgeous this shaker card is. So I grabbed one of the sentiments from the Sassy Pants Love stamp set from My Favorite Things, which I absolutely adore, and especially this sentiment. So I have some black cardstock here and I've placed it in my Midi Misty and I'm using an anti-static bag because I want to heat emboss this. So I'm going to grab my Versamark ink and then I'm going to make sure I have a good coverage of that on there because you guys know me, I always say, you know, if you prep everything right, it would do it right the first time. So I made sure I had enough of that Versamark ink on that stamp so I don't have to repeatedly stamp it. And then I'm going to go ahead and run this through some white embossing powder. Now this embossing powder, I keep in a larger jar because I have a tendency to use a lot of white. So I don't keep this in the little bottles. I prefer just to move it to a larger container. So when I'm pouring it over and I need to tap it off, the embossing powder is not flying everywhere in my room. Next, I'm gonna bring in my heat gun and I'm going to heat that up to a good temperature. Of course, not to burn myself, but I want it to melt this quickly so the paper has less of a chance to bow or warp on itself. And I always like to heat from the front and the back. 
And this is going to achieve that like little bit of warping of your paper instead of a lot of warping of your paper. So just keep that in mind. Now, since I have that sentiment done and it says, I love you more than alcohol and I really love alcohol, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and bring in my Fiskars paper trimmer and I'm just going to trim that down. So I just have a nice banner that's going across the top of my card or rather along the middle of my card. Now I did want to make sure that the tops and bottom were cut evenly. So I'm just lining this up. And what's so great about this paper cutter is that you can see a little wire down the middle of the track. And that's going to help guide me to make sure I'm not cutting the words off on the bottom. All right, now it's time to assemble our card for today. So I went ahead and I grabbed back in that banner and look how cute that looks. I love, love, love using black and white together on my Valentine's Day cards. Even if it's just like a strip of black or a black um, sequence, I just love that classic color combination. So I'm going to go ahead and press that down and I just used my ATG gun. I didn't use any wet adhesive on this and I didn't want to pop this up on this card panel because there's already a lot of depth to this card and I don't want it to be an issue when I need to run it through the mail. All right, so now since that's complete, I can go ahead and take my scissors and just trim off that black that was hanging over the sides. All right, now since we have that done, we can finish off this card. I have white card base here, and this is in the size of an A2 size card, and I'm using my ATG gun to go ahead and place this down in place. Now, the card stock um, base that I'm using is also made out of the same paper, and that is the um, My Favorite Thing Smooth White. I always like for my papers to match when I'm putting them together. Now, of course, I need to add just a few tads of sequins because that's what I love on my cards. I love a little bit of sparkle. So instead of bringing in a pink or a red, I decided to add the little pops of black to this to really pull in the black from that strip and have it on my card panel. Now, I'm just going to do a few because I really don't want this to get too busy. And I'm going to grab my Connect Glue and my little jewel picker to assist me in putting them in place. Now again, if you guys have missed any of my card series from last year or the year before or the year before, <laughs> feel free to swing on over to my playlist and you'll see them there. All right, everybody, that is a wrap for day three of my Valentine's Day card series for 2019. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and I will see you guys in another video soon. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.